Today we're gonna be doing something super different and um, I might have just actually Don't let your kids watch it! Well anyways, today we're going to be learning how to use Cinema 4D and Optane Render and create this really cool sci-fi scene right here. Okay, um, so basically, uh, this is actually going to be a pretty beginner level tutorial, and um, we're going to be going step by step how to create it. I do skip through some stuff, and uh, that's only because it would be boring. It would have been like three hours watching me move landscapes and stuff around, and I'm sure y'all didn't want to watch that. So I cut down the boring stuff, um, but it still should be pretty simple to follow, and if you're brand new to Octane and you're brand new to Cinema 4D, um, this might be a great tutorial for you to start on. And uh, at least if you can't make it all the way through, you'll learn some pretty cool effects and tricks that we can do to get this. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay everyone, welcome to Cinema 4D. So the first thing we're going to be doing is uh, just go ahead and open up, go to Octane, live view window. We're going to be using Octane, that's the only plugin we'll be using today. And uh, go ahead and fire it off. And uh, okay, so everything's working fine. Let's just go ahead and go straight to our render settings. I like to set these up a little bit. A little bit spicy, spicy. Um, at the beginning, I know it's kind of boring, but I'm gonna be doing 3840 by 1920 um, adjusted now. And let's go ahead and go right into Octane and uh, let's check our settings. So we'll do GI Diffuse. And then we'll bump the specular depth up. Something like that looks great. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is, um, I also like, if you have two screens, I kind of encourage you to have uh, your stats up just to make sure you're not gonna push your hardware too hard and crash it. I'm on one GTX 1080, so uh, I'm pretty resource limited and uh, what I can do. So, now, Let's go ahead and import our character. Okay, so now that we have our settings, let's just go ahead and go to materials, uh, I mean objects and create an octane camera. We'll just be facing right here for now. And then let's go ahead and drag in our astronaut. And, uh, and okay, so we have our astronaut, it looks a little funky, that's fine. We'll just go right here and select all of this by punching shift and then punch delete. And then we should have our astronaut. Perfect, okay. Doesn't look too great right now, but uh, we, we're working with it. So um, this is actually a really nice high poly astronaut model. Uh, I like to use it for a lot of my things. Uh, so let's just go ahead and we'll take our Octane camera. Um, and to kind of just keep us uh, like a reference for what we're doing, let's go ahead and create a plane right here. Perfect. And let's go ahead and punch T to scale that plane up. And since we're snapping to our camera right now, we'll change our view. Something like this looks pretty nice. All right. And let's go ahead and also we'll delete these textures right here because we don't need them. And let's go ahead and create a light. So we'll go to objects, lights, area light. Perfect. And then punch R. Rotate that by punching shift to snap it like so, and then punch E and move it back in space. All right, and uh, this looks pretty good, but we need to create a HDRI environment. So let's just go here and create HDR environment, and that's how we get that black look. Pretty nice so far. And uh, next will be tech. So to textures ground, we're just gonna go over here to materials, and then let's go create a octane diffuse material and just snap it right onto the plane. Perfect. Let's go ahead and open that up, and then let's do the node editor. 
So now we have our node editor open. I'm just gonna make this full screen right now. We're gonna do an image texture and then let's do a displacement as well because we're gonna probably wanna be displacing this. So we'll take our image texture, grab into displacement and chain and put, let's put it, the displacement to the displace and the image texture also to bump. We might change this later, uh, we might not. So now we need to select an image texture and the image texture for you will be in the downloads below. Okay, so after some messing around, I came uh, to like this image texture with this displacement right here. And we'll just go over here and we'll make sure that our image and everything looks good. And yeah, so everything's fine. So we have our, di our image with our displacement, change it to like about five centimeters. I thought that looked pretty nice. Uh, we can also rotate our plane. and kind of just move it around to see what looks good. And uh, everything looks nice here. So we'll further texture this plane a little bit. But first what I want to do is take this light right here and uh, we'll punch E and move it up a little bit so we're not wasting rays. And then punch R or punch T rather. Um, actually we're just gonna go right here and we'll go to uh, the scale right here. And we'll just oh. tap our Z value or our x value is what we want down some like so we'll just go ahead and move the camera back some since we changed our focal length and we'll snap back in and uh, we'll change our views just so we can kind of get something that looks good and i'm really liking that right there it looks pretty nice so uh after this we're going to be adding some walls and uh, one thing I do want to do is uh, I kind of want to take this light and make it hover a little bit so it kind of creates an ominous feeling almost. And uh, I think what we're going to end up doing is taking our space man or woman and kind of putting them like on a pedestal or even having them floating right there looks pretty cool. Um, but first we're going to mess with this material a little bit more before we get into the walls because I, uh, I really want to dial down this look. And uh, just by going over here, uh, we can see our displacement is right here. And we're going to click right here. And let's change it a little bit higher. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the process a little bit. I did some changes. I have the bitmap right here. And then I have the displacement 36 and the mid-level right around here. We'll probably change that a little bit. Then I have a fall off map with the minimum value. You can see how that changes right there. Uh, just set it around three. And then fall off skew factor. We're gonna go up to around 14. And that should help hide some of those imperfections in our 8K displacement um, from this. Cause, uh, oh yes, also make sure you have follow vertex normal. And then our filter radius is just one. And we could maybe go up a little bit. And then we'll refire Octane and see what that does. Which is gonna have to update all of our meshes and everything. And we don't want it looking too smooth because then that would look uh, very unnatural. It actually look more natural. Uh, it's looking a little too smooth, so we'll go back to one, fire it again. And uh, we'll move on to our landscape now and kind of creating a cool cave or something like that. So let's go ahead and start working on this cave. Uh, I have like an idea to have some caves on the side. So we'll just control C, control V, and then we'll change this name to um, cave. And uh, we'll change the other one to floor, it's just so we're organized. Perfect. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and actually create a landscape. And we'll go right here, go to landscape. Now we have our landscape. So after uh, doing some experimenting, I found that it would just be easier if we take this right here and we go ahead and drop a bend modifier onto our landscape. And you'll see what that does uh, when we change it. And uh, making sure fit to parent is checked when you're doing this whole thing. So we'll drag our bend like that, and then we'll move our landscape back some. And this is looking like a pretty cool wall. And we'll just mess with our displacement. Let's maybe go right here to our, our cave. 
Fun stuff, fun stuff. Okay, so let's go to our displacement, mess around a little bit with it. We don't want it too smooth. We might actually want it a little bit rougher. Something like that looks pretty nice. We can even kind of mess around a little bit more. Something like this maybe. Is uh, That's looking pretty good, especially since it's far away our eyes can't really tell um, that it's being kind of restricted uh, by the 8K image. Okay, so let's go ahead and just snap right out of our camera view because we don't want to mess that up. Let's go down right here. So right now, just to keep you updated, I'm trying to find kind of like a framing that I like and also uh, a story that I want to tell. I definitely am going to make these bigger. I don't want to lose too much resolution in them. And uh, I'm just going to be reframing, kind of finding a satisfying comp composition. So if you're in this stage, just try to look for a good composition and um, just focus kind of on your rule of thirds and also the story that you're telling. So right now, this cave just doesn't feel grand and uh, big enough for me. So I'm going to actually be taking these up a lot bigger and kind of making our subject feel a little bit small, but also really important because it's in this huge cavernous area. So I've created a composition I'm rather happy with. Um, when you're doing stuff like this, just ask yourself, I like to turn things on and off, and I like to say, okay, is this adding to the story? Is it taking away? So you might be thinking adding puddles is pretty complicated. Uh, we're gonna kind of cheat just by adding a simple plane. And let's go ahead and grab our plane right here. And we want our orientation to be not to that. That should work. Let's go ahead and punch T and just make our plane bigger. Okay, so you can see the plane right here. This looks pretty awesome. And uh, now we're just going to be texturing it. So go ahead and go to materials. And when you go into materials, let's just create an octane diffuse material and let's name this water or watt for water. And we're gonna go ahead and do, make sure you're an octane, and let's do a specular material. And then we're gonna want to go down here somewhere. Okay, we can change our index up a little bit. Let's drop it onto our scene and make sure uh, it's doing what we want. That looks So right now I am just kind of building up these walls a little bit. You Okay, so just to keep you all updated on what's going on, um, all I did is create a cube right here, and um, then I created a octane diffuse material, added it to our character, uh, and then I changed it to a mission, black body mission. Mess with the shader a little bit. Also, to get this kind of ice effect, this is really simple material, guys. Um, all it is is just a specular material. Uh, with some roughness and I fake some shadows and that's pretty much it that's uh this is getting a pretty good look so far uh, there's some more stuff that I want to do like mess with the lighting I'm still not happy with it and I'm gonna kind of change this statue up a little bit and I think the person's looking a little small we maybe this is kind of like an alien civilization or something and they're like frozen one in ice and uh, they're maybe bigger than us and more ominous so uh, that's what we'll be messing with now
So you can basically see we have created this icy texture and it really looks like it's melting. It's not perfect, but it looks pretty nice. I'm gonna change the lighting because we're clipping a lot here and our, our eyes really wouldn't perceive this as clipping. So there's some, so there's some stuff I gotta do with that. Um, but I just wanna show you all how I did this cool ice texture. So first you go to displacement, you click displacement, and then you add a layer texture which is right here so after you add your layer texture you go in through here and there's two things we have a noise value which you really don't have to do too much on um, this is a Vernoli noise uh, and I just changed the global scale to a thousand and the relative scale to 500 after that we'll go back into displacement and we'll go back to the layers and then this is where it's really the magic happening I just created a gradient and uh, let's just go back so I can show you how to do that you just go to shader and then you click gradient which is right there so when you create the gradient you get something like this you get a black and a white and just by clicking right here and changing these values you can move your surface around change the gradient which I actually don't want the black right there um, let's delete that we'll just change it to white and uh, then the ice kind of comes out right there. And then you get a look like this. So we have a nice rocky ice surface. Okay guys, thank you for watching. I hope that this was helpful. Um, and I hope you learned something. I'll definitely be doing more of these. I kinda wanna start like a weekly thing cause uh, I really do love doing this like VFX CGI work. Uh, especially inside of Octane, it's so easy with the lighting system. So if you wanna see more of this, please let me know. And uh, thank you guys for watching and have a great day. Okay, so just for those of you stuck around, I did uh, actually end up solving the clipping problem. So if we go right here, uh, there's a couple cool things I did and I actually like was able to add more color and more like interest into the scene. So what we have here is, um, if I can get it lined up right, we basically have a light right here and then just a cave wall that I just put on a plane right there. And then we have um, our ice object right here which actually has an octane light under it and you can see how it's lighting it up. It's giving a really cool effect. We could do some pretty interesting stuff with that so uh, that's looking really interesting even some close-up renders might prove to be uh, just as interesting as the far away one like something like this I could definitely see being like on a poster of some sort uh, we're just we're just clipping a little bit I'm gonna do some research on like how to increase the dynamic range because uh, this is just it doesn't look good enough really um, but yeah that's basically it guys thank you for watching and uh, peace out again <laughs>